and welcome to my kitchen for today's recipe. So this week's relatable recipe is going to be a roast, but we're not going to do the traditional potatoes, carrots, in a crock pot. That's normally what I do. I found a new recipe and I wanted to try it out. So you get to see me try this out for the first time. Let's hope it's successful. This recipe includes whatever size roast that you want to use. Uh, obviously your cooking time would have to change based off the size of your roast. But I'm going to make a dry rub and put it on there and put it into this casserole dish and then cover it and put it in the fridge while I've got some other things to do. Because I'm going to bake this in the oven as opposed to the crock pot. And in the oven, the recipe says around four hours. I'm thinking my roast, as you can see here, is not really big. So I think it probably would do less than four hours. So you really have to watch it and pay attention to that when you go to roast it. So we're going to put the dry rub on, pop it in the fridge, wait a couple of hours actually because I don't want to put this in my oven until around 3 o'clock or so. And then before we put it in the oven, we will put it into like an aluminum foil pocket, a very large one, because the vegetables will go on the bottom, the roast with the dry rub will go on top of the vegetables, and then we'll pull the sides out of the aluminum foil and bake it on a baking pan until it's ready. So really, once you get the dry rub on there and in the fridge, it's really just cutting up your veggies. So that's super simple. The, the uh, seasonings are a little different, so I'm really curious to see what will happen or what this will taste like because I love all of these different flavors. So I'm really excited to see how they turn out. So I've got my recipe book here. I will put a link to the recipe book in the notes at the end of the video because this is a great recipe book. And even though I'm not following this recipe exactly, it still gives me a base to start with. Like here's what they're saying to do. I'm gonna change a little bit to my preferences, but it still gives me a base to start with. And I do that all the time. So what I've got here is all the ingredients from my dry rub. And it calls for three tablespoons of cornstarch, which I have here. In this container, I have salt, pepper, I think it was, let's see here, two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. And then I also have some dried thyme in here. I have one teaspoon of dried thyme. In this container, these are the two ingredients that kind of surprised me. I have light brown sugar, which that shouldn't surprise me. I use it at my barbecue a lot. So this is just going to sweeten this a little bit. But on light brown sugar, you have one tablespoon of light brown sugar. The really crazy ingredient for me was one teaspoon of instant espresso powder. Now, I love coffee, like love. So when I saw that, I was kind of really excited. So we're going to see what that does. I think it will be really, really great. So we're going to see that. So in this one, which is like your average roast ingredients, dry rub stuff, I've got four teaspoons of onion powder and one teaspoon of garlic powder, which is pretty average for a roast. So all these combined, I'm really excited. So I, you know, most of the time when I do a basic roast that everyone does, I do the onion and the garlic powder, I do the thyme, I do the salt and pepper. I don't normally do cornstarch and I don't normally do brown sugar or espresso powder. So I'm really, really excited. But before you do a dry rub on any type of meat, and I'm gonna actually move this so you can see, they always suggest to get a paper towel and blot it to soak up a little bit of that moisture. So this dry rub is really gonna stick to the actual meat. So I'm gonna grab a couple of paper towels. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just gonna blot this all over. And if you are not gonna use a dry rub, I would say if you were just doing your traditional roast, I would actually suggest blotting it, but then taking it over to your cooktop, putting it on like a flat iron skillet and browning both sides of your roast before you put it in the crock pot. That just gives you a much better texture and a little bit of extra flavor. But since I'm doing a dry rub, I'm not gonna be doing that. All right, so this is the fatty part, which gives it a ton of flavor. So I'm gonna block that too. All right, and now we're ready for our dry rub. Okay, so I've got this all blotted, and as you can see, I put on food safe gloves. You don't have to do that. But just when I'm doing a rub, it gets all over you. I've still got my wedding band on. I don't want to get it on that. So I'm going for, I'm going to go for the gloves. So I'm going to start by mixing all of my dry ingredients. And this is my largest bowl here. So I'm just going to start dumping everything in. And if you're doing this at home, you don't have to separate all these ingredients like I did. You could totally just throw them on a bowl together as you're measuring them out. There's no reason to do all that. So I'm going to grab just a fork, 
to kind of mix these together. And as you can see, that cornstarch made a mess on my cutting board. It's kind of like powdered sugar, it goes everywhere. So I'm gonna pull all those in together. So when you do your dry rub, you don't want all the time on one side of your beef or all the brown sugar, you want it all evenly mixed. And I'm gonna make a huge mess. So keep doing that. I think I'm about ready. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So we are going to start just literally patting it on here. So I'm gonna sprinkle like that. Again, making sure to get your edges because you want every bit of that covered. Got a little extra, so I'm just gonna dump it on. Pat it in, tip it over, make sure that's still patted in. Okay, now that I've made a huge mess, here is my baking dish. I'll just pick this up and transfer it over, and I'm going to dump all of this back on. I know that sounds crazy because it's pretty coated, but I want all of that. Even when I go to put this in the aluminum foil pocket, I will sprinkle some of that dry seasoning over the meat again because I want it to fall down onto the vegetables as they bake or as they roast. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my mess. I'm going to cover this with aluminum foil, pop it in the fridge, and I'll come back later and we'll chop our veggies and we'll get it all in the oven. Okay, so my roast is covered in the rub. It's in the refrigerator. It's been in there probably two hours. I'm going to go ahead and get all my vegetables prepped. I've got the oven preheating to 300. This is a large roasting pan, but I don't know why you wouldn't be able to just use like a cookie sheet or a thinner uh, baking sheet pan. We'll wait and see how much liquid actually comes off of this. But I've got it lined with aluminum foil, and I have it lined enough that it overlaps the baking pan so I can actually fold it in on top of the roast of vegetables to create like an envelope or a pocket. So I'm going to cut up one whole white onion, and I'm going to not do a, a chop necessarily. It's going to be like in six big pieces, so I can kind of just move them around inside the aluminum foil, not small dices. And then you could do whole carrots that have been peeled and washed, but I'm just gonna do the bag of those baby carrots, and I'm gonna cut them lengthwise. Then I've also got a bag of these petite golden potatoes. I have a pound of those. And then I have bay leaves and soy sauce, which I thought the soy sauce was an interesting touch for a roast. I had not done that before. So we're gonna put two bay leaves in once we get the vegetables in, and we're gonna do a drizzle of about two tablespoons of soy sauce over the vegetables, and then we'll place the roast beef on top. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got all my vegetables chopped and ready to go. So I am just going to dump these into my baking dish. Potatoes. My onions. Just place them evenly about. And my carrots. So once all of those are in, I move them around, make sure they're got a little bit of onion everywhere. I'm gonna put in two bay leaves, just one on each side. These are so amazing. These little dry leaves can do wonders for a recipe. So I'm gonna put one on this side. And then one over here somewhere. Really spread the love there. Then you're gonna to wanna to drizzle your soy sauce, and it's about two tablespoons. I'm not really gonna measure. I'm just gonna spread it evenly. I guess plenty. Maybe a little bit more than two tablespoons. But we're gonna do that, and that's gonna look so amazing and yummy already. I'm not gonna add any salt, because there's so much salt in soy sauce, but I am gonna do a sprinkle of black pepper. All right, so I've got a little pinch of black pepper in my palm. Let's sprinkle that around. 
Now I'm gonna grab my roast out of the fridge and place it on top. All right. And as you can tell, well, I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but as you can tell, let me do a close up there. It's kind of absorbed on the side. So this leftover part in the bottom of the pan, I'm gonna work around that again. And then I'm gonna grab all these remnants of the dry rub and pack it back into those edges. Oh, it smells so good. So I think we're good. I'm just gonna wash my hands really good now that I've touched the raw meat and have the dry rub all over me. And then we'll fold this aluminum foil in on itself. Okay. So let's see if we can make this work. So my goal, my goal is to bring these corners around. So I'm gonna start here and here, like opposite corners, make them and bring them to a touch. You can kind of roll them over each other to make them stay. And bring in these two inside corners. I'm gonna tell here that was not long enough, so I'm glad I did some extra pieces. Again, tuck them into each other. Let's bring in these sides. Kind of pin the good thing about aluminum foil is it will kind of pinch together. And just keep doing that until all your aluminum foil is folded in on itself and it's created like this little pocket for all of those seasonings and flavors to come together. It's beautiful. Looks like I've got a perfect little gift in here. So it's gonna be in here in the oven at 300. Again, this is really gonna depend a lot on the thickness and the size of your roast. Mine, as you all saw, was fairly thin. So I'm thinking two hours at 300, but of course I can check it. You have a meat thermometer, this is when that's gonna come in handy. So at two hours I can take it out, insert my meat thermometer to see if it's the right temperature or all else fails, you cut a little slit in the center of it to see what color pink is left in the middle. However, you are releasing juices when you do that. So the meat thermometer is best, but you're gonna to wanna to check that. Even if you have a bigger roast, I would still check it at two hours because you're gonna to wanna to rotate it, maybe move it to a different part of your oven. I will say, you're gonna to wanna to put this towards the bottom. You're not gonna put it on top rack where it's gonna be that close to the heat. You wanna bring it to the bottom rack of your oven and really try not to check on it as much as possible. You really want the heat at 300 to stay in your oven and do a nice slow roast. So we will check it out when it's done. When it's done, I will let it rest inside the aluminum foil on my cutting board for about 15 to 20 minutes before I open it up and start cutting into it. So all those juices can kind of resettle back into the roast beef. I'll meet you back here in a little while. Okay, so I've got my envelope of roast and vegetables. I've already kind of peeked at it. I put a meat thermometer in it to make sure it was okay. Cause I want, I want it to be medium, medium well. Our family doesn't want it to be super, super hot pink, but you don't want it to be too dry either. So in my oven, and you all saw the size of this, it baked at or roasted at 300. It was only about two and a half hours. So really, like I said, it really is gonna make a huge difference on the size of roast. So we are going to cut into this yumminess. Oh, steam. Okay, let me grab a knife. All right, I'm gonna use a large serrated knife. You can use whatever you want. So, in the bay leaves, I've got two in here. You'll wanna take those out, obviously. I hope you can see this okay. I'm just gonna hold it, maybe. Oh, it is done. So you could have it more pink than that if you wanted to. Like I said, our, my family doesn't do super hot pink. I'm not the best carver, so don't judge me. I didn't think about this before, but this would have been perfect with some sort of bread, like a croissant or a yeast roll would have been perfect with this. Because this is really all you need. You don't need to make another side unless you want to do maybe a small sa salad. That would be perfect with this, but I wouldn't. You've got your carrots and your potatoes here. That's the bulk of your meal. So if you do pair it with something, I would suggest maybe just a salad, something very light, or maybe some other like steamed broccoli, something along those lines. But this smells really, really good, and I can't wait for y'all to try it. As you can see, making the rub and prepping it and letting it soak it all up really makes a difference. So that's all your prep work, and then it's just throw it in the oven. I did so many other things while this was cooking, so it's really all one meal, and I love it. So 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you try it. And like I always say, make it your own. Try, change up the vegetables, change up the seasoning, but maybe start with these seasonings and see what you like and what you don't like about it and make it either sweeter or more spicy or somewhere in between. But thanks so much for watching and I really hope you enjoy it.